Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got another plans video for you. Now I know that you're thinking aren't you in the middle of this work from home module so long how many more plans you know we're you were just gonna do one um, blah 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 and I am. <laughs> However uh, the temperatures here in Indiana have started to drop in fact this fall or this fall this weekend I think we're not even supposed to get out of the like it's we're gonna be struggling to get to the upper 60s for our highs um, Fahrenheit which is, um, I mean, that's fall weather. And uh, my kids, of course, are on a hybrid schedule, so they are at school every other day and on their white days, so their school colors are blue and white, um, so it's called white day and blue day, A day, B day, however you want to say it. But on their white days, they both have PE, and as of right now, um, we're in, typically, they would um, dress out for PE, so they have a PE uniform that they change into um, for that class for uh, physical education gym. Um, the, the, outfit they change into, they're not allowed to do that right now because of COVID. So um, on the days that they have um, that class in person, <laughs> which are their white days, um, they're supposed to come dressed for PE um, so that they can do all of the sport stuff, you know, whatever sport they're covering, um, athletic, physical activity that they need to be able to do, um, which means no jeans on those days. So long story short, as of right now, I mean, my son wears ac active athletic wear, whatever, to school every day. That's just what he wears. So that's not a big deal for him. But it is for my daughter. She does not. Um, I mean, she, she'll wear leggings and that kind of thing. But she has just been wearing um, knit shorts. Oh, I think I just got, did I just put lipstick in my eyeball? I may have. I had some lipstick on my finger. Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> Um, anyway, just disregard that. Um, she needs some leggings. So she's been wearing knit shorts, um, but the weather is now dipping. So, um, you know, it's just chilly. And they're doing a lot of stuff outside right now while the weather's still nice. Um, so, it, you know, I think she has it second block of the day. So it's still fairly early in the morning. It's before noon. Um, so it's still kind of chilly outside. So she needs leggings. Um, so I'm doing another module for her and she also wants a few other pieces um, and I promised there'll probably be a third module and there will be there'll be one more module after this one um, that I'll be getting to here momentarily as the weeks go on because um, I have no idea when all this is going to get sewn up I have a lot on my plate at the moment <laughs> but I thought I'd go ahead and share the plan so that I can work on these um, interspersed with other projects as well okay so let's dive in um and I would just like to preface, you know, my daughter, she's an eighth grader, so, but a lot of this stuff is, I mean, it's patterns I wear too. So, you know, this kind of runs the gamut a little bit. Um, I will pop a link up to the lookbook of her first module that we made for her. Um, so for this one, I'm not making everything new. We are bringing in a jacket that I made for her last winter. This is the Kelly Anorak and it, um, by Closet Core Patterns. I have made this jacket three times twice for myself and once now for my daughter. I use this beautiful, I have a whole video on this. I'll pop a link up to that video as well because I talked about sewing with soft shell fabric. So soft shell fabric is like a slick kind of nylon-ish um, on one side and then a fleece on the inside. Uh, so the Kelly Anorak, you can buy it, it comes unlined and then you can also buy a lining pack. So I have made an unlined version for myself. I've made a lined version for myself. That's my winter coat. And then um, I've made this unlined version for my daughter. So um, I did, for the binding, I used a ribbon that's kind of fun there in the top, and it also gets used down in the bottom. And again, I've talked all about this jacket. But this is going to be her kind of fall coat. She got this for Christmas, so, um, you know, she wore it in the spring a little bit, but she hasn't had a ton of chance to wear it to school because then COVID. Um, so by the time it was warm enough to wear it again in the spring, um, she, we weren't leaving the house. So, <laughs> so she'll be able to wear this uh, now in the fall. And it's a beautiful color on her. This is kind of a... Uh, like a pale teal, minty, there's some minty green in there. Um, it's a really good color on her. So this is going to be the topper for this module. And it is already completed. already know that she loves that one, so that makes that easy. All right, now we're going to talk about the bottoms. Okay, so I purchased for her. Um, this was back when I was making all of the active wear for myself when we um, were getting ready to leave for Colorado. And I bought... Um, her some ex so I made her the um, Avery leggings by Helen's closet but Helen's closet patterns and um, she loved them so I decided that I would make her some more for um, school 
So I bought some fabric from Surge Fabrics. It was my first time shopping from Surge and very pleased. My shipping was super quick. I'm very pleased with the um, quality of the athletic fabrics that I bought from them. So I actually have four here. I'm actually gonna be making her four pairs of leggings even though a module typically consists of two pairs of bottoms because two of them are gonna be kind of fall weight bottoms and then the other two are gonna be once it gets hot uh, or cold because um, they're much warmer bot or much warmer weight. So for this module, I have some black suplex. Um, now black's not a great color for her because she is so fair. Like dark colors, period, aren't great. But for the bottoms, you know, it, it's not next to her face. So as long as we put pale things up next to her face, we're good. So um, she wore her black leggings last year to death. This is a suplex, and I've never used suplex before. Um, but I think that this is the same type of uh, fabric that like Lulu um, Lululemon. Um, which those are like a hundred dollar leggings. It's they're all stuffs all supplex. So it is a matte finish knit um, It's a polyester obviously um, I mean most athletic knit is and it feels like it's like a ponty weight knit. It's very stretchy But it is not see-through so she can very easily even when I stretch it a lot I can't see anything through it. So this will be able to be um, leggings worn as pants very easily with this um, That's a big <laughs> big deal. You want to make sure you can't see through your legging fabric. So I'll be doing the high-waisted or the ultra, um, those Avery leggings. Um, all four of these are going to be the Avery leggings and all four of these are going to be the ultra high-rise. So my daughter has a very long torso um, and I made her um, some athletic leggings that are kind of brighter colors um, for actual workout wear. Uh, but I use the ultra high rise and that hits her right at her natural waist and it's perfect and she likes how it sucks everything in. Not that she needs anything sucked in, but you know, it keeps her all nice and um, tucked in and comfortable and she really likes that. So, got the black suplex that I'll be using for one pair. And then for her other pair, this is double brush poly, but it's double brush poly athletic knit. So, it does not feel like the other double brush polys that I have felt before. But it's kind of this space dyed, um, it's called steel is the color. Uh, but I liked the heathered nature of it. It's also super uh, opaque, so you can't see anything through it. So that'll be nice as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has some, obviously, a little bit more going on. So it's not quite as uh, quiet as the black. But yeah, it's a nice um, gray. And so it's going to go with pretty much everything. So... It's called double brush, but it doesn't have that brushed, double brushed feel to it. You know that, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe just a little bit, but not, not, it's not like the other stuff that I used for her ebony that felt like your standard double brush poly. But it's going to make a fantastic pair of leggings. And I bought one yard of each of these. So the Helen's Closet, um, up through quite a bit of the sizes, you can get, um, a pair of leggings out of a yard of fabric if it's a certain width and these are all the perfect width okay for the other two that I'm just gonna go ahead and make right now she probably won't wear any of these until um, winter but I got this Navy it's called midnight Navy and it is a fleeced backed um, knit so it's just like it's like the suplex really on one side so it's just your regular standard uh, knit or athletic knit but then on the inside it's got a um, can you kind of see that it's fleece but they're not heavy, you know? You think fleece, you think a little thicker, but they're not. They're just fleece-backed. And so these are going to make, um, I think, a really cozy pair of leggings when it gets a little colder out, because we do live in Indiana, and it gets pretty cold here. Um, now, she had a pair of fleeced lined leggings. Um, I bought like a five pack or something off Amazon because she needed a pair for her Halloween costume a couple of years ago. And um, she just needed black, but they came in a, it was like cheaper to buy the five pack or whatever. Who knows where they were made? I don't I mean, yeah. But anyway, um, they're like five different colors. And so I wore um, a couple just for like my morning walks and they worked well. And then she wore um, like to school and everything and just wore the crap out of them. But they were like $30 for five pairs. And so they weren't super well made. Well, they just had gotten super pilly. I got rid of all of them. Um, so I needed to replace them with something. So that's the navy that I got out of this. And then I bought some black. It's different than the navy. This is called a micro fleece. So these are kind of, these are fleecy on both sides. Um... But yeah, this is called a micro a micro fleece, and it's just black. Uh, but I yeah, so I'm just gonna do a nice pair of leggings. It's also very opaque; you can't see anything through that. Um, 
but yeah, it's kind of fleecy on both sides. So yeah, I think we'll do another pair of Avery's out of those as well. Although you could do a pair of joggers. That might be something kind of fun. I don't know if should be under that or not. Um, but you could mix it up a little bit and do a pair of joggers if you wanted. But yeah, they're very stretchy. You could very easily do a pair of leggings out of these. And thin, you know, it's not super bulky. It's a very thin um, fleece, but again, opaque. So they, and I think it said in the description that these were all meant for to be leggings were one of the options. So two pairs of fleece for the colder months. So those are her bottoms. Um, I will be making more jeans. Again, another pair of Dawn, another pair of Gingers for her, but we'll do that in the third module. I just really needed to get some leggings out because of the whole PE issue, <laughs> her class. Okay, so four tops. All right, let's start with this one. I have two Minerva fabrics that I'm gonna be using and doing blog posts on. I like to mix her in with my Minerva um, fabrics that I get for blog posts. This is the first one. This is a French Terry. Look at the colors on this. Isn't that gorgeous? I think I showed this in the in the vlog. Um, I was gonna make something for myself out of this, but um, she loved it. So I am doing the motherly thing and letting her have it. So you see there's like birds. Look at those beautiful colors. But that um, kind of a mustardy color is just gorgeous um, background color. And oh my gosh, it feels so good, it's so soft. But I'm going to make with this one, um, New Look 629, here, let me take it out of the sleeve. <laughs> new Look 6298, right? 6298, yes. 6298, and I think we're gonna do the scoop neck, but we're gonna do the pockets on the front. So this is the V-neck version, um, but I want, we wanted the higher neck for her. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do kind of a sweatshirt dress basically because we thought that this could be I mean It's we'll, we'll make it like tunic top, but she can wear it over her leggings very easily to school I thought that was really cute But yeah, we're gonna make this version down here, and this is a three-quarter inch sleeve So I'll ask her if she wants the shorter sleeve or the longer sleeve. I mean we'll make that decision when we make the dress um, But yeah, we're gonna make that one for her Out of this French terry, and I think that's just gonna be very cozy and lovely and she can wear that to church um, depending on how long we make it, she could even wear it just over tights if she wanted to, um, and just wear it as a dress or definitely over her leggings. So this will look good over all, well, there's three colors, four fabrics, but only three colors, the navy. This would look over the navy, the gray, and you can wear it over the black very easily. So there is the first top. We're considering that kind of a tunic top. Okay, next is some fabric here from uh, my Zinx haul. This is this beautiful um, sweater knit, obviously very see-through. Um, we are going to do the Studio Calico, um, uh, what's it called, Batwing dress, but we're not gonna make the dress. I'll pop a picture of the, the pattern up here. Instead of the dress where I'm actually gonna cut it off at the waist and put a, a band along the waist to make it a top. So basically a bat wing top, so it won't be a full dress. Obviously this is see-through because it is a open weave knit, but look at this. My, um, I made this tank. This is a, a Summer Basics tank from Love Notions and I made this during t-shirt week. Look at these colors together. They're perfect. So I'm going to relinquish, I made so many tank tops during t-shirt week, I've got plenty to do my own layering. So I'm gonna let her have this one. Um, isn't that perfect? But I also, this pattern, this was the first one I made during t-shirt week and I actually ended up shortening this pattern by three inches. So I'm actually going to, um, and I think she's gonna need it shortened as well. It's pretty long on me. So I think I'm gonna cut the hem off and use the excess for the neckband on this. So this doesn't have, I mean, it just has hemmed sleeves, um, but uh, I'm still debating what I'm gonna do about the band that I'm gonna make for the waist, to kinda, to cinch it into the waist, but definitely I can use what I cut off the hem of this and then re-hem it um, for the neckband on this. Isn't that crazy? Look how well, I mean, how, who would have thought you'd be able to match those colors, that color, but there we go. So anyway, that's gonna be a bat wing top, and I think that that was gonna be just lovely for her. Isn't that pretty? I'm sure it's polyester. I got it, it's my Zinx um, fabric haul. So that's what we're gonna do for that top. And then last, I have one last fabric to share with you, but we're gonna try and get two things out of it. So this also from Minerva, um, and this is also fabric I was gifted in exchange for a blog post, so I'll be making a blog post um, for this one too. 
Um, well, maybe with two different garments. <laughs> so it's this beautiful blue. This is a tinsel Ponte. Um, so instead of a rayon nylon blend, it's a tinsel, what is the blend? I don't know, it's a, pon a Ponte. I wasn't expecting a Ponte when I um, picked this one out because it was just tinsel jersey. I was expecting something a little drapier, but it's a Ponte um, and it's a beautiful color. This color looks fantastic on her. Um, I mean, it's a good blue for, I mean, it, I can wear this blue too. Blue's an easy one for most people to wear, but anyway. It's a little gray for me, but I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to try and get, um, for her top for this module, I'm gonna be making the Itch to Stitch Uvita top. This is actually a free pattern, um, and I've not made it yet, and I've been wanting to for quite a while, but um, I'm not just gonna make the Uvita. There's also, in order for purchase, you can purchase the add-on pattern that goes with the free Uvita. So you can get the free Uvita. It's a fantastic pattern. I've got a link to it down below. A ton of people have made it. I just haven't made it yet. Um, but then there's also, you can purchase an add-on pattern that allows you to do a whole bunch of different things to the base Uvita. So um, I'm going to be doing, I'm purchasing the um, add-on and we're going to do the kangaroo, basically what Kenneth says on here. <laughs> We're going to do the hood with the kangaroo pocket in the front, so it's a little bit longer. Um, and we thought that this would be lovely over her leggings, and I think it will all, you know, three of those colors, it'll look great. And if we have enough, this is super wide. So I have two meters of this, but it is super wide. Like, I'm talking close to 70 inches wide. It's very wide. So I think I might be able to get, I bought from her, um, Lindsay over at Inside the Hem does her uh, first impression reviews on different, um, independent pattern companies and stuff like that. And she had done one on One Puddle Lane, and which I had not heard of that, that uh, pattern company yet. And she was talking about the Miss Ruby Tuesday dress and how um, there was the base pattern that came with a couple of different um, neckline options and skirts, I think, or sleeves maybe. And then there was an add-on for different bodices to go with that. And then another add-on for different skirts. And you could buy a bundle of all three of those um, for $25, but that's Australian dollars, so that's even cheaper in US dollars. And you just had basically any knit dress you ever need to make. I mean, it is, there's a, a ridiculous number of combinations that you can make. I think Lindsay was figuring out the math, like over a thousand different combinations with all the different bodices, skirts, and then sleeves. Um, so anyway, I'm like, oh my gosh, because it's it's a fit and flare. Well, most of it, most of it, it's a fitted bodice, and then most of the skirts have some flare to them, although there is a couple of like pencil skirts and stuff, or like a cool like sarong wrap skirt. Um, but my daughter loves a good fit, fit and flare dress. So if we have enough, I'm, we're gonna play around and kind of like choose your own adventure and pick a bodice um, from that pattern and then also pick a skirt from that pattern. Pro I'm sure it'll be like the fuller flared skirt because um, that's usually her preference. But then we've got another dress for um, church for the winter that's really easy. I mean, it's just nice and cozy, real easy to throw on again over tights or leggings. And she said she wanted some casual dresses to wear to school as well, which I get very excited about that. So I've got a ton of this fabric because again, because it's so wide, um, doing two meters, I would normally be hesitant about it, being able to get a dress and a um, uh, sweatshirt basically out of it, even though she is like the smallest size because um, that's a lot, but this is so wide, I think we might be able to work, make it work. So <laughs> we'll see. So there we have it. Those are my plans for my daughter's second module. Um, I have no idea when you get to see the finished uh, version of these. Um, stay tuned on the weekly vlogs. I'm sure I'll be sewing through them. Um, I need to make my own module stuff first. Um, and then I've got, um, working on right now, the Style Maker Fabrics. Their fall tour starts on, let's see, the 22nd. So what is that? Is that Tuesday? Yes. The 22nd is on Tuesday. That's when that um, fabric tour starts with a whole bunch of bloggers and, um, uh, vloggers, you know, people with channels and stuff that are going to be sharing their outfits that they're making with the whole new line of fabric that's coming out. It's so good, guys. It is so good. I wanted all of it. So <laughs> there were very few colors that I didn't, um, or very few fabrics that just weren't my colors or whatever. Um, you know, a few, but oh my gosh, I wanted so much of it. Um, anyway, I will probably be doing some shopping. I think all the fabric comes out online next week anyway. Um, but anyway, my stop on the tour is Friday. So I've got one thing made up for it already and I need to make up the other two items to make up my full outfit. 
Um, so that will be next Friday. Uh, so you definitely want to check into that. And then on Tuesday, um, which I should have said first, but uh, we're back to the work from home module. So along and I'm actually going to be talking about thoughtfully purchasing things for your modules. So not everyone is at a level where they want to make everything. Um, for their closet. And some of us, there's just some things we don't have a desire to make. Um, you know, we would rather buy it and whether that's buying secondhand, like thrifted, or if that's buying new. So we're going to be talking about that and how to be very thoughtful in our purchases and um, how to kind of meld that into our module plans as well. So that will be Tuesday's video. Uh, Sunday, we've got part, I think it's four. I'm losing track. It's the tower placket. <laughs> We're doing the tower placket on the sleeve on Sunday. So that's what we've got going forward. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, hit subscribe if you haven't already because we have a lot of great stuff coming up on the channel. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys soon. Have a good weekend. Hope you get some sewing in. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>